Hi, yes, it's 5G whack job time. Let's have a good laugh at all the hysteria, mass hysteria, dogs and cats living together. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. About how 5G is causing the coronavirus and all sorts of rubbish like this. Anyway, of course, Thunderfoot has already covered this. Uh, so I'll link in his video about uh, 5G causing coronavirus. But I th I've had a whole bunch of people contact me about whack job 5G stuff. Because if you have a look uh, recently in the news, like this is like the last day or whatever, last couple of days, YouTube tries to limit spread of false 5G coronavirus. Coronavirus claims after mobile phone towers attacked. Uh, cell phone towers attacked as conspiracy theories in co connecting 5G and coronavirus gain steam. At least 20 UK phone masks vandalized over false 5G coronavirus claims. 5G cell towers torched in the UK. <laughs> People are saying coronavirus is a cover up for 5G. <laughs> It's like whack job central, really. This is hilarious. Celebrities are spreading a wacky coronavirus 5G conspiracy theory and they need to stop. Minister claims 5G coronavirus conspiracy theories is dangerous nonsense. <laughs> Conspiracy between New Zealand lockdown and 5G <laughs> rollout unraveled and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it's it's just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, all of these 5G antennas on these cruise ships, they're really causing the coronavirus. Oh, it's just burying the needle on the mental retardation PKE meter. This is insane. Anyway, there's like uh, videos like this one people have pointed me to about some whack job who's done a teardown of a 5G street light and it's a weapon and he shows various modules. I won't look, I'm not even going <laughs> This is ridiculous. I'm not even gonna. Uh, this will not be a proper debate. We're just gonna have a laugh and we'll actually go through this international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and space. Anyway, um, well, when was this? Uh, anyway, Amp Hour 430. I recommend you listen to it. This is Sharia from the Signal Path who is uh, heads up the millimeter wave uh, ASIC research team at Bell Labs actually designing the millimeter wave ASICs used in 5G technology and he talks all about this so if you want to know the technical uh, details about all this uh, by all means check that out um, it highly recommend it I'll link it in down below that's Shara and I like talking for like an hour an hour and a half about um, the millimeter wave design and transmission and all sorts of stuff so really cool anyway let's go over to here this people have been pointing to me to this the 5g space appeal.org an emergency appeal to the world's governments by scientists doctors environmental organizations and others so yeah if you read the appeal here and we will go through it it's look at all this and it's all referenced look at all this little numbers next to every single thing is referenced and we could spend hours and hours and hours going down oh my god look at this unbelievable and here's all the references here we go we could look at all we could go in and cite all of these references but i thought i haven't gone through it yet but <laughs> This is whack job central stuff, really. Let's just, ah, uh, let's go. But first of all, follow the money. Let's go to the about page here. Who's actually running this? The signatories to this appeal are scientists, doctors, and environmental organizations from every continent who have been working tirelessly for many years to call the world's attention to an invisible assault on our biosphere. That assault can be ignored no longer. 5G, the fifth generation of wireless technology, must not be built on Earth or in space. The notion that radio frequency, commonly known as radio waves, is so somehow not real radiation and is harmless was disproven in the 1970s in laboratories all over the world and the harm to humans animals and plants has since been confirmed in over 10,000 peer-reviewed studies if 5g is built radiation levels will increase 10 to 100 fold virtually overnight everywhere there will literally be no place on earth to hide from it <laughs> The effects and of levels of radio frequency radiation already existing now on the health of the population and the environment as reflected in quality of life, high rates of cancer, neurological disease, heart rate, diabetes, even in children plummeting populations of birds, bees and butterflies and unhealthy forests can be seen and felt everywhere. Yeah, it's probably like those sort of things have probably got, you know, nothing to do with the fact that the like the earth has like warmed up 
like what is it half a degrees or at least or something in the last like 30 50 years or something like that so um but yeah no it's you know correlation always equals causation oh we've had yeah b, b numbers are plummeting so it's got to be the 5g radiation winning argument because if we go over to spurious correlations here, I mean, look at this, suicides by hanging, strangulation and suffocation matches the US spending on science, technology, uh, space and technology. Clear, you know, correlation equals causation here. The number of people who have drowned by falling into a pool and versus films Nicolas Cage has appeared in. That's, that's not bad correlation there. It's pretty good. Look at this, per capita cheese consumption. The number of people who've died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. At, we, we just have to stop cheese consumption. I, I'm going to start a like a, a, an appeal thing now. Get, get signatories. This is ridiculous. Anyway, look how many people they got to sign this. As of April 7, 227,596 people without a clue have from 211 nations and territories have signed this appeal. Wow, let's uh, let's have a look at Australia. Our land, our water, our future in Gosford. <laughs> Abundant happiness. <laughs> Australian College of Environmental Studies. Of course, an organic store. So yeah, all of these companies, <laughs> all these organisations have all signed this. <laughs> That's just in Australia. I mean, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> so let's check out the person behind this, Arthur Fristenberg. He's, uh, for his CV, go to cellphonetaskforce.org. Ah, oh, this will be good. Ah, oh, curriculum vitae of, ah, oh, our good mate Arthur. Let's have a look. He's the founder and president of Cell Phone Task Force and author of The Invisible Rainbow, A History of Electricity and Life. Oh, bestseller. He is also author of Microwaving Our Planet, The Environmental Impact of the Wireless Revolution, Cell Phone Task Force, 1996. He was editor of the journal No Place to Hide. A huge circulation on that. I, I was a regular subscriber. Since 1996, the task force has provided a global clearinghouse for information about wireless technologies, injurious effects, and a national support network for people disabled. They've been disabled by all this uh, cell phone RF technology. Oh, in 1997, the task force was the lead litigant in a challenge brought by over 50 citizen groups that have been getting against the FCC's limits for human exposure to radio frequency radiation. How'd they get on with that? Anyone know? Post in the comments down below. Fristenberg is also president of the Santa Fe Alliance for Public Health and Safety, which he co-founded in 2005, which mounted a, a successful ooh, campaign to oppose citywide Wi-Fi in Santa Fe. Yeah, how's that working out now? I bet the Wi-Fi is everywhere in Santa Fe. Let me see if I can find a map. Yeah, Santa Fe, here we go. Well, uh, something tells me <laughs> they weren't very successful. <laughs> Downtown Santa Fe. I don't never been to Santa Fe, but anyway, downtown Santa Fe. <laughs> Sorry, it's riddled with Wi-Fi. Oops. And right back here in episode 55. Wow, in January 2010. That's a blast from the past. Back in the old garage, I did this video on uh, <laughs> the radiation levels of Wi-Fi because you could apparently harness energy from Wi-Fi. And it showed you how little energy is available in Wi-Fi. And I go through uh, the numbers here on the whiteboard. And surprise, surprise. Here's a little secret you might not know. RF energy drops off with a square of the distance. <gasps> and when you've got an antenna that's with a 360 degree radiation pattern like Wi-Fi, <gasps> you calculate one small area, one, dis one small like square centimeter area, like one meter away from the antenna, and you can calculate how much uh, power is in that one <laughs> square centimeter or whatever. It's, yeah, half a bee's dick. But... You know, eh, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. He is president of New Mexicans for Utility Safety, which he co-founded in 2015, which is which succeeded in stopping the deployment of smart meters in New Mexico cities. He co-founded the Global Union Against Radiation Deployment from Space in 2014 to oppose global wireless internet from thousands of satellites in space. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out too well. SpaceX aren't really pumping those satellites up there. Unbelievable. But he's a published author. Look at this in renowned journals. Articles by Fristenberger or about his work have appeared in Mother Jones, The Ecologist, Earth Island Journal, 
vegetarian times. Like, for, forget getting something published in Nature. It no vegetarian times. That is the that is the pinnacle of scientific research. Vegetarian times. Un, wow, it it's got to be true. Village Voice. Newton, Newton Reader, Townsend Letter for Doctors and Patients, oh, New York Daily News, San Francisco Chronicle, and other newspapers and magazines. After graduating with a BA in mathematics, so yeah, not an engineer, uh, he attended the University of California Irvine School of Medicine from 1978 to 82. Injury by X-ray overdose. <laughs> Sorry to hear, Arthur, but um, yeah, X-rays are really powerful and they're really close to you. Danger, Will Robinson. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cut short his medical career. For the past 37 years, he's been a researcher, consultant, and lecturer on health and environmental effects of electromagnetic radiation. Yeah, so just because he got injured by an X-ray overdose, uh, cut short his medical career. Since then, uh, yeah, RF's the problem. But back in 1967, it was the winner of the Westinghouse Science Talent Search. Wow. Hang on. You get a Bachelor of Arts? In with major in mathematics, I thought, uh, yeah, Bachelor of Arts, uh, Bachelor of Arts in math. So it's not, it's an arts degree with a major in mathematics. Okay. Anyway, highly, highly credentialed in the medical and engineering fields, obviously. And he's practically a superhero. Look at this. Injured by overdose of X-rays, he became hypersensitive to electromagnetic radiation. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, is it, does he have a cape? I mean, uh, seriously, you need a cape. Capes are cool. I'm uh, just saying. You could have, like, electromagnetic spectrum on the back of the cape or something like that. Became hypersensitive to electromagnetic radiation. Uh, can't be all up here. Nah. So, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I think for the last 40 years, he's been uh, running this whole uh, shtick to do with, yeah, RF radiation and all sorts of other, <laughs> like, hypersensitivity and cell phones cause cancer and whatnot. So, yeah, that's who's uh, running this whole shebang. Great. Hang on, we've got other signatories here. Let's have a look. Uh, scientists, let's have a look at engineers, shall we? Because we do know engineers. I wonder if, uh, read PDF in engineers. Let's have a look. Uh, boop, boop. engineers, Australia. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, Mohan, he's got a Bachelor of Technology. Uh, Peter, good on you. Wow, all these engineers in Australia have signed it. Must be legit. Wow, these keep going and going and going and going. Wow, I feel left out. Jeez. Is there some secret handshake I'm missing out on? Austria, not Australia. All right, let's have a look at these world-renowned scientists. Once again, Australia, look at them all. All these scientists, they're all signing up. They're all signing up for this woo-woo. Wow, they must have all uh, missed out on their basic science 101 class, I'm guessing. But, uh, yep, 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 no, no, we're in Austria again. And look at and all these other people who signed it. I mean, like there's 227,000 chiropractors. Ah, <laughs> the woo-woo field of choice. Um, <laughs> building. What's a building biologist? Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> veterinarians, beekeepers, other professions, <laughs> sex workers <laughs> signing up to stop 5G because it'll impact their business. Yeah. Oh boy, anyway, let's read the appeal. Ah, oh, this could go on for hours and hours. So <laughs> just kick back. To the UN, the WHO, EU, Council of Europe, Europe, and governments of all nations. We, the undersigned scientists, doctors, environmental organizations, and citizens from blank blank countries urgently call for a halt to the deployment of 5G, fifth generation wireless network, including 5G from space satellites. 5G will massively increase exposure to radio frequency RF radiation on top of the 2G, 3G and 4G networks for telecommunications. Actually, 2G is now defunct. Um, 3G is like going this, at least here in Australia, I think is going like ne this year or next year or something. They've already announced it's uh, retirement. So it's like if you don't have... 4G, you just, you, things will stop working. I mean, you can't use a 2G phone anymore. RF radiation has been proven harmful for humans and the environment. Yeah, it can be if you get close enough, but that's the trick, ain't it?
The deployment of 5G constitutes an experiment on humanity and the environment that is defined as a crime under international law. No, it's basic engineering. Yes, there's been a ton of research um, on the effects of this and most of the studies show, well, unless you're like, got your phone, pretend this is my phone, I don't carry my phone around here. Anyway, unless you keep it up like this, like all day, like you're one of these business people who keep it here like 24 seven and you continuously transmit in like this, I didn't, you know, yeah, you can get some localized heating effect and stuff like that. And it could actually cause a problem in extreme cases. But most people who use one for like uh, 10 minutes a day, or whatever, even like an hour a day perhaps, it's not really a problem. That's why it's so hard to actually find real research that actually proves it. I mean, I'm talking about like proper peer-reviewed research that comprehensively uh, proves that it's a problem. It's not. But it can be, and that's the thing. In all these woo-woo claims, there's always a kernel of truth in there. And that's how they uh, pull people in and suck you in. For those who actually don't, couldn't be bothered, which is 99.999% of people, more, that of practically 100% of people who have signed this, I guarantee, have not gone into the actual claims for this down the bottom. And, and gone and looked at the references and actually tried to understand them. Guaranteed. I bet you there's not one person on that list, apart from the guy who's actually done it, has actually bothered to go in and read this stuff. Telecommunication companies worldwide, with the support of governments, are poised within the next two years to roll out the fifth generation wireless network. This is set to deliver what is acknowledged to be unprecedented, unprecedented societal change on a global scale. We will have smart homes, smart businesses, smart highways, smart cities. Yeah, and self-driving cars are uh, decades off. Look, I'm not a fan of smart home appliances either. In fact, I'm not even a fan of 5G because 5G is, if you listen to Shari on the signal path, it's very... Uh, it's designed for extremely high bandwidth, sort of like pretty much kind of, yeah, you can electronically steer it, but basically point to point kind of thing. It's just not a replacement for 4G. And it's just, like, it's not going to, we're going to have one day 4G vanish and 5G be the thing. It, it just can't happen. You need so many points of presence, I guess, or what's the correct term? So many like uh, transceivers scattered around the place. It's next to impossible. It's not a replacement for 4G technology. So it's like, it's just meh, it has some niche use, but <laughs> like people aren't gonna be transitioning to 5G. Why on earth do you need like, you know, one gigabit per second on your phone? It's just absolutely ridiculous. What is not widely acknowledged is that this will also result in unprecedented environmental change on a global scale. The planned density of radio frequency transmitters is impossible to envisage. In addition to millions of new 5G base stations on Earth and 20,000 new satellites in space, 200 billion transmitting objects, according to estimates, will be part of the Internet of Things. Yeah, I hate the Internet of Things growing. And one trillion objects a few years later. Commercial 5G at lower frequencies and slower speeds was <laughs> deployed in... Um, uh, Qatar, Finland, Estonia, mid-2018. The rollout of 5G at extremely high millimeter wave frequencies is planned to begin at the 20 end of 2018. Looks like this has been going a while, this uh, thing. <laughs> but it's just come to my attention recently. So yeah, the thing about this is that all these, you know, one trillion objects, the Internet of Things is like extremely low power. We're talking like Bluetooth and Ant and other uh, low power protocols. It's not like we're gonna all have little 5G Internet of Things things pumping out like watts of power on a little node. It's, it's just ridiculous. We're down in like the micro watt region. So even if there was a 5G transmitter 100 meters away on the building, I can see over there like that. Um, <laughs> By the time it gets here and gets through the window, because it's attenuated hugely through uh, objects, it's pretty much uh, you know a line of sight. You can't have anything in the way uh, for 5G. It's absorbed very easily. And by the time it hits my window here, we're down in the microwatt region. It's not a problem. It's about energy, heating. You don't get much heating from microwatts. You see, the thing is, well, 5G is higher frequency than 
uh, 4G, we're talking typically like 25 plus uh, gigahertz here, uh, as opposed to like like five odd gigs, whatever uh, the current 4G networks operate at or under that in various uh, places. Uh, really we're not talking about any higher transmission or reception levels but uh for but we are talking about more transmitters per tower uh for example these are so-called uh, mimo antenna arrays like a 5g system uh because it will have more uh slots available it might have an array of you know, um, 64 by 64 uh, transmitters and receivers, for example, whereas a 4G tower might only have like 4 by 4 at most, something like that. But in terms of the actual, if the tower's 100 meters away on that uh, roof uh, next door to me there, we're talking basically the same power level actually uh, hidden like per square centimeter per meter, however you want to measure it, um, of a person or the antenna of the reception of your mobile phone or whatever. So it's essentially no different to what we already have with the 4G system. There's nothing magical about 5G. Yeah, it's higher frequency, but that doesn't make it dangerous. In fact, it makes it less dangerous because it's less able to penetrate various objects. I'm behind glass here. It's not going to penetrate this glass very well, unlike the 4G signal that my mobile phone can pick up. You know, I get four bars here or whatever. And whereas 5G, I'll probably get zippity doodah because it's got to come through either like the glass and the wall and things like that. So in fact, it's really less of a problem than our current 3G and 4G systems in terms of like uh, electromagnetic power levels. 5G just uses a wider uh, frequency band, so it has hence why we can get higher bandwidth and things, and it has more slots available on each tower so that everyone can get their one gig or 10 gig bit connection or whatever like that, or more people can get it than you'd get on the uh, 4G network because it's using up a narrower uh, frequency range. So therefore, for the data rate is effectively got to be lower than 5G. But in terms of like power level, there's nothing magic about 5G or magically dangerous about 5G. In fact, I think it's probably less dangerous than 4G or 3G. It's just dumb. And they love to use words like this. I'm sure I'm surprised it's not in bold. You know, the rollout of 5G at extremely high millimeter wave frequencies is planned to begin. I mean, <laughs> As if the frequency has some, uh, it just makes it more dangerous. In that case, oh, light. Boy, you better shut your eyes. You don't want to be, you know, bombarded with all that light radiation you're getting. <sighs> Despite widespread denial, the evidence that radio frequency RF radiation is harmful to life is already overwhelming. Is it? Really? <laughs> the accumulated clinical evidence of sick and injured human, sick and injured human beings, like <laughs> scientifically proven from radiation <laughs> because this guy got <laughs> dosed with some x-rays and got turned into a <laughs> 40 years ago and got turned into a superhero. <laughs> Damage to DNA cells and organ systems in a wide variety of plants and animals and epidemiological evidence that a major diseases are, that the major diseases of modern civilization, cancer, heart disease, and diabetes diabetes in large part caused by electromagnetic pollution, forms of literature based on well over ten thousand peer-reviewed studies. <laughs> yeah, written on toilet paper. If the telecommunication industry's plans for 5G come to fruition, no person, no animal, no bird, no insect, no plant on Earth will be able to avoid exposure 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, to levels of RF radiation that are 10 to hundreds of times greater than what exists today. Really? Are they? <laughs> yeah, we might have more uh, towers around and things like that, but in terms of reception level, it's the same Thing. We're already completely surrounded by <laughs> RF radiation and it hasn't proved, actually proven, scientifically proven to be a problem. And permanent damage to all of the Earth's ecosystems. I think the Earth's <laughs> quite capable of taking care of itself. Thank you very much. Immediate measures must be taken to protect humanity and the environment in accordance with ethical imperatives and international agreements. <laughs> 5G will result in a massive increase in inescapable involuntary exposure to wireless radiation. Dude, just go live in the woods. You'll be fine. You'll be getting like nanowatts from the satellites. You'll be okay. <laughs> just build your house out of tin foil. You'll be fine.
Ground-based 5G. In order to transmit the enormous amounts of data required for the Internet of Things, 5G technology when fully deployed. Internet of Things is little tiny power devices that mostly that need, you know, uh, like microwatts of uh, power consumption. They run off the smell of an oily rag. They're not going to be transmitted on 5G. They even admit poorly transmitted through solid material. This will require every carrier to install base stations every 100 meters in every urban area in the world. Yeah, because the difference is, is that, uh, let's say 4G, 3G, for example, can penetrate the walls and the glass that we've got here, and I get X amount of microwatts reception level. It's going to be no different if we've got a little micro 5G transmitter like within like in the top of a warehouse or something like that you're still going to get the same reception levels it's not like they're going to install like a 10 kilowatt transmitter at the top of that warehouse it's just, it's just ridiculous they have these little different categories for micro transmitters and micro arrays just like this and I'm going to Wikipedia here, so please forgive me if you're not a Wikipedia fanboy. But look, we have these different categories. Femto cells, pico cells, micro cells, metro cells, things like that. They have different power output ratings. You're talking tens of meters, things like this. You're not going to install in, as I said, like a 10 kilowatt 5G tower um, in, in a little warehouse that, you know, is like a 10 meter high roof or something like that. You're going to install in like sub Wi-Fi levels. This is lower, lower levels than a typical Wi-Fi router. But I guess, yeah, you tried to stop Wi-Fi back in the like 90s or whatever and that failed. But like we're talking like serious, ridiculous. This is output power levels, not to mention actual reception levels. Do the calculations. Drops with a, st a square of the distance. You can calculate, okay, you've got a 100 milliwatt transmitter up here. Cal assuming that it's like a, it's like shaped like this, for example, you've got X square, a radius on the ground. Calculate that radius. Calculate the amount of power per square centimeter or per square meter at that distance. You'll find it's naff all. Oh, actually, there you go. They do actually compare Wi-Fi here. Here we go. 20 to 100 uh, outdoors. A bit like, yeah, typically, uh, like, you go in your Wi-Fi router. You can actually set. They might even let you set the, like, they let you set the output power level. They might even tell you what it is in milliwatts. And that's the thing. With these output ones, like, yeah, okay, it might be transmitting at, like, 10 watts, 20 watts, something like that. You know, you put it in the middle of some huge park or something like that, and it's got to cover, like, hundreds of meters circle radius like this. So unless you climb the freaking tower and stick your head right up to the thing, it's not going to be a problem. In fact, you better ban all those, like, 5-watt walkie-talkies and stuff. Like, you whack a walkie-talkie up to your head like one of those UHF radios, and they're pumping out, you know, 5 watts or whatever. That's, like, right next to your head. And then <laughs> people are complaining about, oh, this might be, like, maybe maybe 5 to 10 watts output power for a microcell for, like, hundreds of meters. Come on. Once again, it's the word in here. Unlike previous generations of wireless technology in which a single antenna broadcasts over a wide area, 5G base stations and 5G devices will have multiple antennas arranged in phase arrays that work together to emit focused, steerable, laser-like beams that just zap you like this. Come on. <laughs> Unbelievable. In fact, it's more efficient. The thing is, doing this sort of beam forming actually leads to, uh, potentially leads to lower uh, reception and transmitter powers because you're utilizing uh, the transmit power and the bandwidth uh, in this particular case. So for a given, you know, data throughput or something like that, you could be talking about actually lower <laughs> power levels than what you're talking about with uh, 3G, 4G or other systems. And there's been much talk about this. The US FCC has adopted rules permitting effective power of those beams to be as much as 20 watts, 10 times more power. So if we actually go over and have a look at these uh, adopted rules here, um, yeah, you go into here, power limits. They're talking about um, an EIRP, which is the isotropic radiated, uh, effective isotropic radiated uh, power density of plus 75 dBm per megahertz uh, maximum. And that, yes, is... Uh, supposedly higher than 4G, but what you can take into account is that there's actually more uh, losses in 
uh, the transmission of this thing, so they have to up the power a little bit, but effective, but the uh, limits to the general public. We'll go into a presentation here. This is uh, from the FCC, and yeah, they say plus 75 dBm per 100 megahertz for fixed and base stations, and they've got other limits for mobile stations and transportable stations and, and stuff like that. Um, but yes, yeah, so it could be high, a bit higher than 4G, but the losses are greater. And if you have a look at this, uh, this is an Ericsson uh, thing, I think. And if you have a look at here, they've got like exclusion zones. Here's the antenna here, and they've got existing guidelines for the 10 watts per square meter, the exclusion zone for the general public, exclusion zones for workers, which can be up to 50 watts per square meter and things like this. So they still have to meet all of these requirements for exclusion zones. In fact, it's harder for 5G because of the potential to have a higher limit. Doesn't mean it's transmitting all the times and all the nodes, and you can have a look at actually one of these uh, MIMO small cell antennas here. You can see this one's got a 512, uh, well, that's not 512 um, antenna elements, but uh, oh yeah, no, there could be four per thing there. Anyway, um, yeah, like they're in an array like this, so they can do beamform and stuff like that, but you're not going to always get the maximum, in fact, you hardly ever get the maximum power output out of these things. It's it's highly adaptive because the protocols and the communications is all like much more advanced than 3G and 4G, which just, it can dynamically change the power, but this is far more advanced than 3G and 4G, which just, you know, spew it out. 5G is actually more advanced, so it could actually be potentially safer than 3G or 4G uh, or other types of, uh, you know, <laughs> transmission technology because it's so intelligent, it can not only beamform, but also uh, modulate uh, the output uh, power as well. So yeah, look, it's not a problem. Now, if we have a look at who sets these guidelines, it's the ICNIRP. And if you go over to the ICNIRP, who are they? The International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. So they're the ones who protect us from this and set the standards about these, uh, you know, how far the transmitters have to be away and the reception power and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, let's go down here. Characteristics of the applications. There are a number of differences between 5G and previous wireless standards. One of these, is that in addition to the EMF frequencies that are used for 3G and 4G, some 5G communications technologies utilize higher EMF frequencies, e.g. 28 gigahertz is currently used in the USA. EMFs at higher frequencies produce relatively superficial exposure relatively superficial exposure with less power penetrating deep into the body. As I said, like they have a hard time getting through objects like windows and walls like your 3G and your 4G do. The restrictions uh, in the guidelines account for this uh, to ensure that exposure does not ha ha cause any harm. Different EMF frequencies also behave differently in the environment. As a result, additional antenna are required to utilize these higher frequencies because everything, you know, somebody farts, uh, 10 meters away, it's going to interfere with 5G. That's how low power these things are when they actually get to the receiver. It's ridiculous. These are not expected to affect the exposure scenario appreciably, and initial measurement studies suggest that exposure from 5G antennas will be approximately similar to that of 3G and 4G antennas. A key feature of the 5G wireless standard is that we'll use beamforming technology which allows for the RF EMFs to be focused to the region where it is needed, e.g. to a person using a mobile phone, rather than being spread out over a large area. This will allow, for example, the same RF EMF frequencies to be sent to different users concurrently without interfering with one another, which increases communication rates, blah, blah, blah. This also, as I said, this also reduces exposure in regions where communication is not needed. 5G is actually better then 4G and 3G in this respect with no appreciable difference in the amount of uh, EMF, uh, RF energy that's actually you're exposed to. <laughs> Come on. RF EMFs have the ability to penetrate the human body with the main effect being the rising temperature in the exposed tissue. The human body can adjust to small temperature increases in the same way as it does when undertaking exercise and performing sporting activities. Jeez, I like still sweat for an hour after an intense class. Like that's how hot my body's getting. This is because the body can regulate its internal temperature. However, above a certain level referred to as the threshold, RF exposure and the accompanying temperature rise can provoke serious health effects such as heat stress stroke and tissue damage. Yes, if you're standing right next with your face like uh, pressed up against the transmitter, 
Another general characteristic is that the higher the frequency, the lower the depth of penetration of the EMFs into the body. As 5G technologies can utilize high EMFs in addition to those currently used, power from those higher frequencies will be primarily absorbed more superficially than from previous mobile communications technologies. Yet people are just going nuts over 5G because, oh, it's higher frequency, it must be bad. However, although the proportion of power that is absorbed superficially as opposed to deeper is larger than the high, is larger for the higher frequencies, the restrictions have been set to expose that a resultant speaks, yeah, peak spatial power will remain far lower than that required to adversely affect health. Accordingly, 5G exposures will not cause any harm, providing that they adhere to the guidelines. And as if cell towers and mobile phones aren't going to adhere to these guidelines. And it's important to note that the uh, at the levels measured so far, the existing 1998 regulations before 5G was even a wet dream would also provide protection for 5G technology. However, it is difficult to predict how new technologies will develop. Uh, they've made the new one, 2020, has made a number of changes to ensure that new technologies such as 5G will not be able to cause harm regardless of our current expectations. These changes include the addition of whole body average restrictions for frequencies greater than 6 gigahertz restrictions for brief six minute exposures and for frequencies greater than 6 gig and the reduction of the average in area for frequencies above 6 gig so there you go that's from the actual body that is responsible for uh, setting the standards for like exposure limits and everything else so once again unless you climb the tower and stick your head up to the transmitter it's not going to be a problem the actual uh reception uh thing for the general public look this is 25 meters away and we're already outside the uh general public like uh exclusion zone and things like that so for this huge base uh, station it's pretty much just like a ballpark on par with 3g it's not like magically a thousand times worse it's, it's ridiculous all these fears are completely unfounded and once again, multiple laser-like beams simultaneously zapping people like, you know, a laser fly zapper. <laughs> cancer for you, cancer for you, cancer for you. At least five companies are proposing to provide 5G from space for a combined 20,000 satellites, low and medium Earth orbit that will blanket the Earth with powerful, focused, steerable beams. Each satellite will emit middle millimeter waves at an effective radiator power up to 5 million watts from thousands of antennas and <laughs> raised in effect. <laughs> yeah, all of these uh, satellites have like 5 megawatt transmitters on them. <laughs> They even admit it. Although the energy reaching the ground from satellites will be less than that from ground-paced antennas, it will irradiate areas of Earth not reached by other transmitters and will be additional to ground other ground-based uh, <laughs> objects. It's like, come on, it's not just pumping it out like this. It's more intelligent than that. That's a reason for 5G and beam forming. But even more importantly, the satellites will be located in the Earth's magnetosphere, which exerts a significant influence over the electrical properties of the atmosphere. The alteration of the Earth's electromagnetic environment may be an even greater threat to life and humanity than the radiation from ground-based antennas. See below. Oh, do we get into wacky thing? I've already... There's this thing about clouds. Let me show you this. Jesus. <laughs> Our mental retardation PKE meter's gone off the scale for Dr. Naomi Wolf. If you enlarge, you see tiny waves throughout this giant anomalous cloud formation. Could 5G be having unintended consequences? EMF is a real thing that Europe more strictly regu regulates than the US. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sold. It's got to be the 5G woo-woo causing this cloud formation. Couldn't be any atmosphere, any other atmospheric phenomenon. No. Look at it like... Oh, there it is. There it is. I, that is clear evidence. I wish you could see these electrified looking clouds in the strange detail that my phone can't capture. Also correlates with people's ears. Heads hurting. <laughs> it's fine. There's reasons that your head's hurting, man. <laughs> but it ain't 5G. Is 5G messing with delicate reactions of clouds and with fluids and tissues in human beings? <laughs> Would make sense? <laughs> You think? X-rays are energy. <laughs> this is great stuff. Over New York City, a field of particulate shearing off to the right. 
override of man-made boundary line with these distinct fields of ripples. 5G, what is causing ripples like water in man-made cloud cover? <laughs> Andrew Cuomo isn't he the like New York mayor or so? I don't know, something like that. I, I don't know. Emissions visibility depends on atmospheric conditions, among other things. But yeah, those ripples are damn weird. Microwave heaters in the atmosphere are confirmed now, confirmed, along with chemtrails. Tomorrow, Congress votes on 5G. Wouldn't new? Why wouldn't new energy ways create ripples in cloud cover? I don't, other anomalies? I, it's clearly 5G. And look, look at those chemtrails. Yep, 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 confirmed. Confirmed. Uh, it's you know, the New World Order, Illuminati. I, yep. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, the New World Order and the Illuminati. Thank you. Harmful effects of radio frequency radiation are already proven because there's dozens of appeals from similar nutcase organizations. Yeah, that's proof. <laughs> sure. Oh, God. Look at all these. Look at all these. These are all, like miscarriage. Uh, yeah, cardiovascular disease. Cognitive impairment. Yeah, anyone who believes this is cognitively impaired, all right. DNA damage. Uh, oxidative stress. What on earth is that? <laughs> but it's clearly caused by 5G and RF. Increase, increase free radicals. I thought free radicals were a good thing, aren't they? Uh, obviously behind the times. 5G causes autism, just like vaccines. <coughs> and ADHD as well. I suspect it's not ADHD causing your kids to go hyper. It's because they're kids. Damage goes well beyond the human races. There is abundant evidence of harm to diverse plant and wildlife and laboratory animals, ants, birds, honeybees, fruit flies. Oh, the, the trees, the trees just can't, they just quiver every time, 5G. The WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer concluded in 2011 that RF radiation of frequencies 30 kilohertz to 300 gig are possibly carcinogenic to humans. However, recent evidence includes the latest studies on cell phone use and brain cancer risks, indicative that RF radiation is is a proven carcinogenic to humans. Oh, well, like, let's just go check out these references, shall we? And this one here, International Agency for Research on Cancer, Non-Ionizing Radiation, World Health Organization. Let's first of all, let's just look at, well, have we had an increased rate of brain cancer? Because people have their shoe phone, like right up to their phone like this for hours a day. I don't know, I'm, I'm lucky if I get like one call a week from the wife and then it's like uh, I put it on the hands-free thing. But anyway, the people with their shoe phone up to their ear, you know, talk, people don't talk anymore, do they? They just socially chat now on their Facebooks. Jeez, when did I get my first phone? It was like the Nokia 5110, I think it was, and that's like just before 2000, something like that. If anything, we've seen, so that's kind of like widespread, like there was, like, you know, <laughs> got the brick phones before that and things like that. So, you know, but if anything, look, it's just like the cancer rates of, if anything, they've dropped if you hold your, tongue at the right angle it's they've gone down so like mortality females males and uh, like uh, like come on you don't even have to read the rest of the studies people are obsessed with these things oh and before the new facebooks and everything everyone was like talking for like hours a day on their phones and there's been no increased rate of brain cancer here in australia so come on like <laughs> where's your data so yeah, like you can just go and read all these uh, things until the cows come home, but really, where is the real data that the biggest transmitter that everyone has is that's right next to their brain causes you know it causes cancer and all sorts. Of, like where is it? Where is the increased rate of this? It's just not there. It's not in the data. So like I, I don't know. You could go read this for yourself. Like. But it says, like, this thing does not provide a quantitative assessment of any cancer risk, nor does it discuss about any other potential health effects of RF radiation. This is a, this is a nothing burger. This is their proof. And here it is, non-ionizing radiation and monographs on the evaluation of carcinogenic risks to humans, International Agency for Research on Cancer for the World Health Organization. Okay. 
While the number of mobile phone subscriptions has been incre increasing rapidly around the world, changes in mobile phone technology have led to lower time averaged RF power emitted from mobile phones than that at present of those of previous generations. And 5G is doing a similar thing. I'm reading this thing and it's like, it's, it's a nothing burger. There's like nothing in here that's going bingo <laughs> like rf causes brain cancer and other stuff it's just it's just not here so let's go to the evaluation at the end remember this is the document that they cite as proof over here that rf radiation is possibly carcinogenic to humans blah 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 this is their actual you know this is their proof cancer in humans there is limited evidence it's, it's, it's highlighted, limited evidence in humans for the carcinogenicity of radiofrequency radiation. And they do mention positive associations have been observed, but there's limited evidence, basically. Like, with the billions of people using mobile phones, the countless studies over the years, there's limited evidence. It's a nothing burger. Cancer in animals, limited evidence in ex experimental animals. <laughs> like... Overall evaluation, radio frequency electromagnetic fields are possibly carcinogenic to humans. Possibly. Under what set? But is there data that actually shows that's happening in the real world? Of course. If you stick your head up to your shoe phone for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if you sleep with it right like this and it's just continually transmitted, yeah, maybe you're going to heat up some of your brain tissue. And maybe if you do that for 20 years, yeah, maybe the odd person might get brain cancer. <laughs> it's, just, it's ridiculous. Come on. And even here, they admit the human epidemiological evidence was mixed. <laughs> Several small early case studies were considered to be largely uninformative. A large cohort study shows no increase in risk of relevant tumors, but it lacked information on level of mobile phone use and where several potential sources uh, exposure. Things like that showed no increased risk of relevant It tells you <laughs> no increased risk of relevant tumors. Of course, they have to say are possibly carcinogenic because under the most extreme circumstances, yes, of course, if you drink too much water, you're going to drown. The bulk of evidence came from reports of the Interphone study, a very large international model case study and a separate large case control study from Sweden. While affected by selection bias and information bias to varying degrees, even in their own evidence paper, it says that it was inflicted by <laughs> selection bias and information bias. These studies showed an association between uh, glioma, I don't know what that is, and acoustic neuroma, I don't know what that is, and mobile phone use, specifically in people with highest cumulative use of mobile phones. Yes, on the same side as they had, which are the tumor development pieces. And yes, it looks like in some extreme cases, somebody had a tumor on the side of their head that they had their mobile <laughs> phone strapped to for bloody 20 hours a day. Unbelievable. The comparative weakness of the associations in the Interphone study and inconsistencies between its results and those of the Swedish study lead to the evaluation of limited evidence. So multiple conflicting studies is what they're showing. <laughs> I mean, come on. There was, however, a minority opinion that current evidence in humans was inadequate, therefore permitting no conclusion about a causal association. This minority saw inconsistency between the two case-controlled studies and a lack of exposure response relationship in the Interphone study. The minority also pointed out the fact that no increase in rates of uh, glioma or acoustic neuroma was seen in a nationwide Danish cohort study. And that up until now, reported time trends in incidents related have not shown a parallel trend to time trends in mobile phone use. There's no association there. They just don't even correlate, let alone <laughs> have causation, really. This is like, it, it's, it's a nothing burger, really. I mean, sure, like, yeah, actually uh, continue to study the effects of this sort of stuff on the human physiology, but we've had, we've been bombarded with this stuff for generations now, and still, the, like, the studies are like, eh, kind of not really, but in the extreme cases, yeah, but, like, they're extreme cases. Yeah, you'll just get the odd person strapping their mobile phone to their head for 24-7.
the deployment of 5G satellites must be prohibited, blah, blah. Like, bio, oh, biological rhythm, biorhythms. They were all the rage in the 70s and 80s, weren't they? You could get biorhythm calculators. You get it in your, uh, <laughs> you get it in your little uh, digital diary back in the day. You remember those like sharp digital, you could get like biorhythms, uh, like <laughs> That was all the rage. Whatever happened to biorhythms? And the well-being of all organi organisms depends on the stability of this environment, including the electrical properties of the atmosphere. Oh, God. Explain the importance of the Schumann resonances and why isotropic, isopheric disturbances can alter blood pressure and melatonin and cause cancer. And so reproductive cardiac and neurological disease and death. Oh, we're, we're just getting into whack, whack job territory. These elements of an electromagnetic environment have already been altered by radiation from power lines. We had to get to power lines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I lived near power lines when I was a kid. <laughs> Nothing wrong with me. <laughs> The placement of tens of thousands of satellites directly in both the ionosphere and magnetosphere emitting modulated signals at millions of watts, milli megawatts. Wow, megawatt transmitters up there. Wow, I wonder where they get the power from. Geez, those, uh, those you know, nuclear thermoelectric generators must be pretty good tech these days. It's likely to alter our electromagnetic environment beyond our ability to adapt. Informal monitor. Anyway, this. Crap, it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on is both uh, both acute and chronic effects and on and on and more references and more studies. Well, governments are failing their duty of care to the populations they gather and it goes on and on and on. Um, international agreements are being violated. Children, think of the children. The Nuremberg Code, you can't experiment on humans. You can't possibly put 5G transmission. That's experimentation on humans. It's inhumane. I like, are we, no, we're not even halfway. Look at the scroll bar. Oh, we call up on the, oh, they just, this is like the classic sales technique of any like scam. Although these people though genuinely believe this stuff. They really, the people behind this genuinely believe. They are that deluded that they will just find every little scrap of evidence regardless of how re relevant it is um, to uh, to actually uh, prove their cause. Respond to appeal and it just go, it, oh no, no, sorry. Here's the, it's just signatories. Okay, we're, we're at the end. Whew. Anyway, I, there you go. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to call it quits. That is the international appeal to stop 5G on Earth and in space. So, yeah, let, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, my engineering audience, my 700 plus thousand uh, audience of engineers, are you going to go sign it? Are you embarrassed that you signed it five years ago or something and your name's in that list? <laughs> Anyway, that's absolutely hilarious. So yeah, 5G causes everything. It's it's the magic woo-woo that causes the coronavirus and causes cancer and it's going to kill our kids and the bees and the environment. Unbelievable. Yeah, that mental retardation PKE meter is just off the scale. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. Anyway, leave your thoughts down below. I like this is not a proper debunking. It's just it's just having a laugh. <laughs> These nut jobs. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't just stop reading the news and about this sort of stuff and like you see these posts on Facebook or wherever and with all this woo-woo of all this crap in here and they just bamboozle you that scientists and engineers and also, you know, people are all signing this thing and it must be legit and it's like, no, look, come on, this is just blah, 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 and all these references. And you go in and read them, and they're like nothing burgers. Like, they, they really are. Like, seriously. And all the... But they've put serious studies behind this, and, and it's just very little to, if anything, has really come out about it. If anything, they all conflict each other, and they even admit in here that it's just, you know, it, it's nah, nah. It's a nothing burger. Anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. I, I can't handle this anymore.
<laughs> Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Links to other whack job articles and, and news reports and things like that. People ripping down cell towers. <laughs> Unbelievable. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.